Follow along with our All Saints Sunday service. You can either turn to your bulletins or to the Book of Common Prayer. And those with us online, uh, you can follow along with the links in the description for this video. We'll begin our service now today for Holy Eucharist. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now with the College for Purity. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. You are our Lord Jesus Christ, saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. We continue now with the words of the Gloria. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace as well towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son of Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takes away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us, for thou only art our holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only art the Christ of the Holy Ghost, our most high and glory to God our Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Almighty God, who has knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship, the mystical body of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, grant us grace so to follow thy blessed saints in all the virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys which thou hast prepared for those who unfeignedly love thee. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading today is from the book of Revelation. After this I, John, looked, and there was great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood among the, around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might. Be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, 
and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now please read with me responsibly from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I know the glory of the Lord. Let the humble be heir to Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I saw, I saw the Lord in the hands of me, and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Peace and the Lord was good. Now we are ready to trust in him. Fear the Lord. You that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. The second reading is from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks God. God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Amen. The film Coco follows the main character Miguel as he ends up accidentally traveling to the land of the dead. And while he is there, he learns something particular to this world of Coco. The stories of the dead are forgotten. They will disappear from this land of the dead that Miguel finds himself in. He discovers this as he befriends someone there who, it turns out, spoiler alert, 
to be his great-great-grandfather, who is in grave danger of being forgotten by their family. Now, to give everyone reassurance, all turns out well. Miguel is able to return to the land of the living and to remind his great-grandmother Coco, the title character, about her father. And Coco shares the story about her father with the rest of the family. And then Miguel, after this, we see him later with his own family, the, the younger members of his family. And he, in turn, is sharing this story. And he's also sharing the story about Coco, too, who we see in the background with all the rest of the ancestors of this family, as she, too, has recently passed on to this land of the dead. Now, there's something beautiful about this tradition that Coco reminds us of, this tradition of remembering our family members who have died. This is something, too, that's been shown with grief to help us, to help us to remember those that we love, that we've lost. Now, on the other hand, the message that we get in this film that if we don't continue to share these stories, that these people will be forgotten and literally disappear from the land of the dead. This is a frightening idea. It's very scary, very spooky for all of us to think about. And I know that this is an idea that people find scary. I've witnessed it. I've seen people out there who are genuinely concerned with their legacy, who look around and wonder if there's nothing to mark their passing. At the very least, a plaque somewhere around them. There's a sense for these people of who am I without this mark, without the sense of legacy, without some sort of mark reminder of I was here, I existed. Without that, there are some people that just don't even know who they are. But the good news for us is this isn't what makes us saints. This doesn't make us part of the kingdom of God. Because there's nothing that we can do on our part to become children of God. There's nothing, not even ensuring that our memory in this world remains, that will make us worthy in God's eyes. We don't do the work to be made worthy. That's something that God does for us. And this is what we see in our reading from the book of Revelation today. What makes us worthy, what makes us righteous, is being washed in the blood of the Lamb. In other words, Jesus has done the work to save us. Jesus has got our backs. It doesn't matter if no one remembers us, because Jesus has us covered. The first epistle of John shows us this, too. It's there that we hear that we have been made children 
of God. But this hasn't happened because of anything that we did. No, the epistle makes it clear that this is simply because of God's love for us. We don't do anything to receive that love. God gives it to us freely. Even in our reading from the Beatitudes this morning, we see that God doesn't favor those who are strong or mighty or would be deemed in any way worthy. God reaches out. Jesus reaches out to bless the lowly, humble, poor, and weak. We don't have to be great, mighty, or anything else. That's not our work to do. That's the work of Jesus. Now, the world of the land of the dead in Coco may speak to our fears. It may even be how we perceive the world around us. We might be worried about our legacy. We might be worried that people will even remember us after we're gone. Yet on this Sunday, when we commemorate all the saints, both living and dead. We have to realize how little we actually know about many of the saints. And yet, we still have the assurance that they have a place in God's heavenly kingdom. And as saints, we have a place there as well. We don't need to fear that we are going away if anyone forgets us. Jesus makes sure of that. There's nothing we have to do to ensure this place for us. There's nothing we could do to be worthy of it anyway. God does the work for us. God gives us the love that we need to be God's children. God washes us white in the blood of the Lamb so that we can be pure and be ready to be part of the saints. So don't worry about being remembered. You are part of the saints of God, not by your own work, but by the love, grace, and mercy of our Lord. All Saints Day is one of the most appropriate days for baptism in the church. So on Sundays like this, 
when we don't have a baptism, we are allowed by the prayer book to substitute for the Nicene Creed, the baptismal covenant. So let us stand. We will get ready to affirm our faith in that baptismal covenant together. On this day, when we remember all who have been baptized into the great body of Christ, we call upon you to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once <coughs> renounced Satan and all his works. We promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From us he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Ghost? I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread and in the prayers? I have will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? Whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will with God's help. Should you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? And respect the dignity of every human being. I will with God's help. The Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we'll continue with the prayers of the pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Almighty and ever living God, when my holy word is called to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, Trey, our priest, as well as Francis, Bishop of Rome, Bartholomew, Archbishop of Constantinople, and all other denominational leaders, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also to enroll the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe our president, Tom our governor, John our mayor, and all our local elected officials, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we must humbly beseech thee thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and suffer. Ike, Claire, Joyce, Laura, Lake, Cameron, Barbara, Joan, Ken, Jerry, Michelle, Veronica, Harriet, Art, Jim, Lee, JJ, Aaron, Jennifer, Lucas, Carla, Ron, Frank, Cassie, Jane, 
Alexandra, Linda, Liz, Shauna, Tammy, Barbara, Maddie, Lucille, Christine, Rich, Andrew, Tom, Jimmy, Arthur, Vance, Edith, Sharon, Karen, Walt, Amy, Carol, Candy, Amy, Veronica, Hey Zen, Faye Young, Rose, Jerry, Lauren, Brian, Christina, Matthew, Catherine, Alma, Rose, Scott, Sandy, Craig, Norma, Ryan, Matt, Deandra, John, Haley, Marge, Mary, Paul, Todd, Chuck, Jay, Jean, Jack, Fresco family, Barbara, Nancy, Aubrey, Jim, Doris, Susan, Bob, Mary, Vicki, Miller, Anthony, Jimmy, Stephanie, Carol, Barb, and Joanne. And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We give thanks and pray for those celebrating birthdays this week. Gianni, John, Paul, Jill, and Kristen. We give thanks and pray for those celebrating anniversaries this week. We pray for children, teens, and college students of this parish, and for those serving in the military. We pray for the life and witness of our companion parish, St. Mark AME Zion Church Newtown, and St. Paul's Levittown. Lord, look graciously on my church, and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for thy people and equip us for all our ministries. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed in this life in thy faith and fear, especially Angela Felt, Munis Mella, and Milton Bradley, for whom altar flowers have been given, and Christian martyrs throughout the world, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good example of the <coughs> Blessed Virgin Mary, Joseph, her most holy spouse, Luke, our patron, and of all thy saints that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Taking a moment of silence for reflection, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. <clears throat> Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most seriously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking us just that thou have an indignation against us. We do mercy repent, and our heart is sorry for these our misdoings. Bear remembrance that is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all this past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and be in the goodness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. 
And please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with my spirit. Please show one another a sign of peace. And peace to those who are with us online as well. You may be seated. As always, the announcements can be found in the back of your bulletin, and I do ask that you look at those at your leisure. Uh, we've got important things like our Thanksgiving baskets coming up. Um, and um, right at the beginning, we've got the uh, sugar uh, cookie order form, uh, which is due November 12th. So uh, please uh, make sure you get those in by November 12th and drop things off for the Thanksgiving baskets by November 17th. Uh, as I said last week, this is going to be my last Sunday. I'll be starting uh, as rector at uh, Holy Comforter in Drexel Hill uh, at the beginning of December. So uh, thank you all again uh, for uh, this time among you. And um, it's so great to see so many people here at this uh, service in particular, too. So and, and thank you all for your time and warmth warm words and wishes, um, it's, uh, it's not long. Um, we've got uh, Bud Holland will be here uh, next week uh, serving as supply, and after that, uh, we've got him and some others that will be cycling through for the next couple of months. So please give them a warm welcome, a warm welcome back in the case for some uh, as they are here with us again. We're now, oh, uh, one thing uh, from our senior warden. First of all, as Brother Trey mentioned, um, I want to thank him for ministering to us for the past two and a half years through some rather difficult times. And also wish him well in his vocation and as pastor of Holy Comforter. Second item is to remind everyone of our stewardship effort for 2024. Can you believe that? 2024. In years past, our goal was to meet all of our operational expenses through pledges and, and other contributions, but that's no longer that easy. COVID has taken a toll on participation and inflation has taken a toll on expenses. We're by no means alone in this situation as it is affecting churches everywhere. We have cut and continue to cut expenses wherever possible, but we still have heating and air conditioning, gas and electric, water and sewer, snow shoveling, lawn maintenance, etc the same expenses you have at home. And here I am asking for pledges. I get it. It's not a popular subject, but it is a necessary one. As Ruth said in her letter, 100% of Vestry has returned their pledges with an increase over last year. I would love to see for the parish as a whole. I'd love to see that for the parish as a whole but I am realistic. Your pledge would be greatly appreciated. An increase in your pledge would be amazing. Loyalty Sunday is November 19th. If at all possible, we would like to have your pledges by then. That's two weeks. They can be mailed, they can be dropped at the office, they can be put in the collection basket at the back. I really don't care how they're returned. <laughs> But I urge you for St. Luke's to please return them. So, thank you. Um, as Father Trey had mentioned, he's moving on. And we're, we're getting much closer to having someone fill his place. Uh, I would be optimistic if I said it would happen by the end of the year. I'm hoping, that's my target, 
is to be able to name someone by the end of the year, um, if not sooner. But um, that's where we are. We will be coming out, Susan will be sending something out this week uh, with a, a kind of a spreadsheet. You know, next Sunday, you know, Bud Holland is going to be doing the 8 and 10 the following week. So and so is going to be doing the 8 and the 10. In some weeks, um, we may be doing morning prayer for the 8 and somebody will be doing the 10. We're working all that out and uh, we'll have that available and uh, send it out as an email um, during next week so you can. Uh, yeah, you can know who you're going to be getting. <laughs> all right, that's all. Thank you, Father. Okay. And that's a good reminder. We'll have uh, talks throughout this month um, by our various vestry members um, about stewardship and giving. And um, just to add to what John said, um, having the pledge. It's, it's not just a, you know, we wanted X amount of money, and we also realize circumstances change, um, you know, and that's fine. But having a sense of what you think you'll be able to give is a huge help to the church for budgeting. Um, so, you know, like John said, even as we're cutting costs, you know, having a sense of, you know, what's coming in helps us tremendously. And, we're blessed as many Episcopal churches and, and many in this diocese are to have um, you know money saved up. But you know the great thing about having more money come in is that that can continue to be that safety net for us so that we can continue uh, to be uh, the city on the hill, the light of God um, to the nations. Um, that center for sharing the gospel for decades to come. So um, just, you know, as we go about this month, do think about that too. As we get ready now to move into the Holy Communion portion of our service, um, please know first off that all baptized Christians are warmly invited to receive. Um, if there's any reason you wish not to receive, you can simply cross your arms. Uh, that'll be a sign to me that you'd like a blessing instead. We do have gluten-free wafers as well. Uh, if you need those, just simply ask. Um, and uh, you know, as a reminder too, we do have the chalice. Um, we do ask that you drink from it uh, if uh, that is your desire. But know that Jesus is present in one kind or both. So if you don't wish to drink from the chalice, uh, you won't hurt our feelings, uh, you can simply walk back to your seat um, after receiving the breath. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice. God.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer 1. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, who in the multitude of thy saints has compassed about us with so great a cloud of witnesses that we, rejoicing in their fellowship, may run with patience the race that is set before us, and together with them, we receive the crown of glory that fadeth not away. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praise in thee and say, Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, from the side. But blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord, who is sent in thy house. Oh, glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for the vow of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offer, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. We must humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, to procure us, and of thy almighty goodness such safe to bless and sanctify, with thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body, we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness and mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all of thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through a manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with him, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover once for all, is sacrificed for us. We are your brothers, keep the peace. Hallelujah. The Lamb of God, take us away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. The Lamb of God, take us away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. The Lamb of God, take us away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell on him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feel on him in your hearts by faith.
Our service now continues with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. <coughs> Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food and the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and thus assure us thereby Thy favor and goodness towards us, that we are very members of the Lord, in the midst of the body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs to the hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord shine the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.